Hello everyone, for those of you who don't know Isaac Butterfield, he calls himself a comedian, but what I found from watching his content is he's not particularly funny. He never even really makes any jokes per se, but what tends to happen is he unintentionally turns himself into the joke, as you're about to find out. He just recently uploaded a video titled Stop Being Racist to Animals, and this is actually a response to one of my older videos uh, about speciesism. So today, in typical fashion, we're going to look through Isaac Butterfield's video and rebut each of his criticisms point by point. You probably think you're a pretty good person. Well, guess what, mate? You're not. You're a huge piece of shit, and I'll tell you why. Because you're racist to animals. Human beings eat animals and that is evil, racist, sexist and every bloody thing else and it is, ladies and gentlemen, ready for this word, speciesist. It's speciesism and it makes me sick. So what Isaac just did there was poison the well and this is a tactic that he commonly employs. Poisoning the well is essentially a preemptive ad hominem attack. It primes the audience with adverse information. That makes the audience question your debate opponent's credibility. So what Isaac did here was dishonestly introduce the topic of speciesism, and he also misrepresented what speciesism is to prime his audience into thinking that the concept of speciesism is ridiculous. Speciesism, in the most simple and basic of terms, is the unequal treatment of animals based on species. Uh, some of you may have heard this from animal rights activists, why love one but eat the other? From the perspective of animal rights activists, there is not a meaningful difference between a dog and a pig that would justify loving and caring for a dog, but brutally murdering a pig for food, especially considering that both of these animals are highly intelligent and social creatures. Now, you may personally disagree with animal rights activists, and you might have your own justifications for loving and caring for your own pets, but killing and eating other animals for food, but there is a stark contrast between introducing the concept of speciesism as why love one but eat the other, and Isaac Butterfield's method of dishonestly introducing and representing the topic by asking, oh, do you eat meat? Well, that makes you a racist. And why does Isaac Butterfield employ these dishonest tactics whenever he tries to criticize vegans? Well, it's because he doesn't have any actual arguments, and he has to make up for his lack of actual arguments by employing these sorts of logical fallacies. And to find out more about speciesism, let's go to the biggest pussy on the internet. Yes, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. Please make welcome back to the channel for the first time in about a year, Vegan Gains! So Isaac Butterfield called me a pussy. Well, I noticed that you are doing a worldwide tour for your stand-up comedy or whatever, if you can call it that, and apparently you're going to be stopping by the United States. I live in Canada, but I am pretty close to the border, so uh, I guess when you have your, old, your whole schedule sorted out, I guess uh, we can meet up sometime, maybe find a boxing or MMA gym, and find out who the real pussy is. Let me introduce you to the concept of speciesism. Speciesism is an arbitrary distinction between members of different species in an attempt to justify differences in treatment. For example, if I were to say, pigs are just pigs, they're farm animals, they're not pets like dogs, and therefore it's okay to kill pigs. So you mean to say because we have domestic dogs, cats, and let's say horses, and we treat them differently to the animals we eat, we're all dirty racists? Good one, head. So Isaac Butterfield just used a straw man fallacy. A straw man fallacy is when you deliberately misrepresent someone's argument in an attempt to avoid their actual arguments and create a false argument, a straw man argument that they never made, which is much easier to refute. And in this case, rather than actually responding to my challenge, why love one and eat the other, and giving some sort of justification for loving and caring for pet companion animals, but, you know, brutally murdering farm animals, uh, he just claimed that I said, if you eat meat, that makes you a racist. 
Obviously, I never said that. He is just deliberately misrepresenting my arguments because, again, he has no arguments of his own. He has no way of refuting the ethical principles of veganism. And so he has to use these sorts of dishonest debate tactics, uh, you know, relying on logical fallacies. Why do we still choose to kill and eat pigs when we realize they're not much different from our pets? Because bacon. <laughs> Dogs do not have delicious, delicious bacon. I'm going to assume that Isaac Butterfield was being facetious here, but I still have two points to make. If you're going to seriously claim that uh, because pigs taste good, that makes it okay to kill them. Well, according to some Asian cultures, dogs taste great. And according to some interesting individuals, uh, apparently people taste great. There are cannibals who love the taste of human flesh. They think it tastes better than any other type of meat. So does that justify killing and eating people because people taste great? I'd imagine you'd say no. So this taste pleasure argument goes out the window. And secondly, this, this, the whole point of this video is to make fun of the concept of speciesism, to make it appear ridiculous. But so far, the closest you've come to making an actual argument against the concept of speciesism is an obvious joke. So if you're going to claim speciesism is ridiculous, but all you can come up with is a joke, I think you've become the joke here. Because as a group, as a society, and as a culture, we have decided that dogs are not food. Cats are not food. And unlike other animals, we've decided that our young, our babies, aren't food, right? We've decided that some things are food and other things are not food. Look at bears. Bears have decided that everyone else, they're gonna eat the cubs, the baby bears. They don't give a shit. they'll fucking eat anything. But we, as a society and as a culture, have decided that some things are for eating and some things are for not eating. So finally, Isaac Butterfield has come up with an argument. He argues that the reason it is okay to treat some animals as companion animals, to love and care for them as pets, but to kill and eat other animals like pigs is because of the social contract. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a social contract is, a social contract is an implicit agreement between members of a society for social benefits. So a very basic example of a social contract is the implicit agreement we all have with each other to not attack each other, not harm each other, not steal from each other, uh, respect each other's privacy. That implicit agreement we all have with each other gives us pro-social benefits where we're able to walk outside, talk with one another, exchange goods, and uh, live together relatively peacefully. And these social contracts can extend to animals, which is why we have pets like cats and dogs, but some animals are outside of our social contract, like, you know, cows, chickens, and pigs, and that's why we kill and eat them. So in Isaac's own words, uh, as a culture, as a society, we've determined that some animals are companion animals and some animals are food animals. The problem with uh, this idea that it, something is morally justified because a culture, a society has agreed it is morally acceptable, uh, you could justify some horrible, horrible atrocities. For instance, currently in Saudi Arabia, the culture and society has determined that it is morally acceptable to murder gay people. Just because their society and culture has decided that they want to murder gay people, does that make it morally acceptable? And if Isaac Butterfield were to answer no, just because a culture and society believes something is morally acceptable, that does not automatically make it morally acceptable, then he has contradicted himself and he cannot use something like a social contract to justify this difference in treatment between uh, animals of different species. He can't say a uh, social contract makes it okay to kill and eat pigs uh, because he will not apply those moral principles consistently and he won't say, well, social contract makes it okay to kill gay people in Saudi Arabia. And I also want to point out uh, that, again, Isaac is trying to make uh, this concept of speciesism sound ridiculous, it's stupid, but the arguments that he has come up with, his own moral principles, would actually lead to horrible human atrocities like the killing of homosexuals. So whose beliefs are more ridiculous here? Ignorance is definitely one of the main driving forces behind speciesism. If people knew the ways these animals were being treated, they would not support this difference in treatment. The answer to all of this, honestly, is hunting. 
And I know that sounds like a bit of a weird thing to say, but hear me out. So if we all hunted individually for our families or for our tribes like we did for thousands and thousands of years, animals that we would kill for food would only encounter humans once, perhaps in their entire lives, at the moment of their death for the consumption of their meat. Whereas in, you know, factory farming, which I've said on this channel many a time is horrible and horrendous, these animals are constantly in contact with humans and may live their lives in fear. But of course, Vegan Gaines would not agree with this. He'd just say, why don't you just not eat animals and eat plant products? Well, that's great to say that, but if you kill one cow, take that one animal's life, you're only taking one life. That's, you know, not nice. It's not a nice thing to do. But what's worse than that is taking thousands and thousands of lives, like when a combine harvester or a plowing machine, or I don't know how farms are done, happens right through a big field they pull all these bloody big plants out and what happens is little animals die little ducks little rabbits little ferrets little things right well you may be surprised to find out that isaac butterfield is just plain wrong and he's also deliberately cherry picking biased unreliable and unscientific sources so the information on isaac butterfield's screen was taken from an article published by the conversation and according to the article in order to produce grains at least 25 times more sentient animals are being killed per kilogram of usable protein well there's two issues here for one thing they don't actually uh, link to a scientific source, and secondly, read it again. At least 25 times more sentient animals are being killed per kilogram of usable protein. So this doesn't mean more animals are being killed overall, this is only per kilogram of protein. Obviously, grains are not as protein dense as most animals, so this is a this is an extremely misleading figure. And if you're trying to feed a large population, obviously you're not focusing on protein, you're focusing on giving people enough calories. And on average, in order to feed one person, they eat one million calories per year. And it turns out, per million calories, far, far fewer animals are killed to produce grains than they are killed to produce any animal product. I also want to point out that Isaac Butterfield is obviously from Australia. Well, Australia is the global leader in species extinction. Obviously, one of the driving factors of species extinction is habitat loss. Well, in Australia, agricultural expansion, particularly for beef cattle production, is the major driver of tree clearing. So Isaac, not only are you just plain dead scientifically wrong, but you're also a massive hypocrite. Uh, your diet, the food choices you are making, are leading to more animal deaths overall and uh, are largely responsible for species extinction. So Isaac's video does go on for a bit longer, but I'm not going to respond to the rest of it. Uh, he pretty much didn't have anything else to say and he ended up going way, way off topic. He ended up insulting my wife, claiming she looks like a man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll be honest with you. I didn't think that was his wife. I thought it was his little brother, but we'll move on. Uh, look, I think my wife is beautiful. She's super cute. Um, and I've never seen you with any women. I've never seen you have a girlfriend or I've checked your social media. I've never seen you with any women. So either women want absolutely nothing to do with you, which wouldn't surprise me, or the women you're with are less attractive than my wife. So I can only assume the reason you decided to try to insult my wife when this video was supposed to be about veganism, speciesism, is because you're just a petty, jealous and uh, yeah, other than that, uh, Isaac didn't come up with any valid arguments uh, in support of carnism. He didn't refute any of the ethical principles of veganism. All he did was rely on logical fallacies. Uh, he, the only actual argument he came up with would actually justify horrible human atrocities. And he tried to provide some sort of evidence that uh, veganism results in more animal deaths, but uh, that backfired on him. He actually cherry-picked an 
one scientific source, and when you look at the actual data, more animals are killed to produce animal products, and animal products are largely responsible for species extinction. So uh, thank you for wasting all of our time, Isaac. It's uh, it, it was fun. And if you like this video, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon or through my website. I have some funding perks you may find interesting. If you're looking for clothing, then check out the Vegan Gain store. If you want some online coaching, then check out Quality Gains. He offers online customized coaching programs, and you can get 10% off by using the discount code VG10. And as always, keep making those vegan gains. Beef. What a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow. The way it gets to your plate and 